The series tells about the Duluo continent, a special place where there is magical power. Tang San is a young man who has the same nightmare that repeats itself every night in great detail. In the dream, San finds himself in a huge room with many living plants and hears a gentle female voice calling him. This voice tells the guy that he can be strong because there are secrets in him, but for this he needs to reach his potential. In a nightmare, San sees him being tortured, struggling with huge plants and monsters, and also appears in the form of a large spider. Falling out of bed, the guy woke up and realized that this is another dream that has no connection with reality. While doing his daily chores, San chops wood, lights the stove, and cooks breakfast before feeding his drunken father. A little later, San is engaged in blacksmithing, like his father, who taught his son to handle metal from childhood. After work, the guy goes to a quiet place in the woods near the house, where he can do meditation so that the soul leaves the body. Suddenly, his eyes start to glow, which makes it clear that this is the first magical ability the guy has mastered. As it turned out, San picked up a book on the study of magical powers and started studying it. Now he can see the world in slow motion, as well as control objects, making nails float in the air. On the way home, the guy hears a strange sound and decides to see what is hidden in the bushes. There, he is attacked by a huge spider and San has to save himself, demonstrating his dexterity. He can't escape because the arthropod is too fast. Realizing this, San decides to blind the opponent, but this also does not bring results. He is soon trapped, but an unknown man appears, who catches and then beats the spider, getting rid of the threat. Unknown looks like a wild wolf, which scares the guy even more. Feeling fear, the man assumes a normal form and announces that he is a magical fighter from the spiritual temple, where the strongest warriors are gathered. The fighter is surprised by how San wrestled with a huge spider and tried to blind it. Taking his hand, the magic warrior tries to understand what kind of fighting spirit the guy has. San is convinced that he has no fighting spirit, but the fighter is convinced otherwise. After saying goodbye to the stranger, San returns home and reads an old book on the way. After meeting with his father, he tells about what happened and shows a book about fighting spirit. The boy learns that most of the inhabitants of the continent have magical abilities, but his father ignores all this, starting to work. San continues the story and says that he blinded the spider. This phrase was able to interest father, so the guy talks about it in more detail. The father asks his son to hide his magical abilities and not tell anyone about them, especially magicians with black eyes. A little later, San meets with the head of the village, who considers himself the guy's grandfather. The old man reports that a magic fighter has come from the palace, who wants to choose newcomers who have a fighting spirit. San is convinced that he doesn't have this gift, but the mayor is willing to help him and free his soul. The father intervenes in their conversation and claims that the son is not going anywhere, and a little later takes and burns an old magic book. The father is convinced that he is doing good for him, because there are too many dangers in life, and it is not worth exposing themselves to them. The next morning, the boy wakes up from a nightmare and tells his dream to his father. San assumes that the female voice may belong to her mother and asks her to tell him about her, but father refuses to answer. He is convinced that it is too early for his son to know the whole truth and perhaps he will tell about it in time. A little later, a fighter that San met in the forest conducts a test to identify the fighting spirit of all the young men of the village using a magic talisman. San watches from afar as his father has forbidden him to participate in the selection process and learn more about morale. At the end of the tests, San comes out and meets the guy, asking why he ignored the test. The fighter assumes that San's fighting spirit is just scared, but the talisman might reveal it. These words arouse the boy's curiosity and he sneaks into the test room. Once in the center, he sees silver grass growing on his arm, proving that he has a fighting spirit. The mayor and Sue notice that something is going on in San's other hand and assume that it is another fighting spirit that he is hiding. This is a unique case because every guy has one power but not always knows how to detect it. At the end of the test, Sue recommends that San listen to his father and return home since he has no offensive capabilities and there is no point in developing defensive efforts unless he becomes a disciple of the spiritual temple. When the guy returns home, the father is angry at him because the son disobeyed orders and passed the test. A couple of minutes later, he asks his son to demonstrate his magical spirit and he shows silver grass. Seeing this, 
The father is not surprised, as if he knew from the very beginning what kind of strength and fighting spirit his son would have. San declares that he would like to go to the academy in order to discover his unique abilities. Father knew that this day would come sooner or later, so he allows San to go to the academy of the spiritual temple. At the same time, he has a condition. The son will study magical abilities only there and will try not to attract too much attention to himself. The guy agrees to the demands, but decides to tell about the second fighting spirit that appeared in his second hand. San is trying to focus and demonstrate a second power. Upon seeing Tian's hammer, his father informs him that it is the strongest magic that can make him a great fighter. Soon San, along with the mayor of the city, goes to a spiritual temple where he meets local teachers. Not everyone perceives the guy in a friendly way and asks him to behave appropriately for a beginner, not entering the temple building without permission. San is sharp-tongued and cannot just keep silent, which only exacerbates the conflict situation. The old man tries to resolve the dispute, but nothing works out for him, which is why they are trying to expel them from the temple. Soon the dispute is stopped by Chiao, the son of the prince of the city in which they are located. He promises to help San at all stages of settling into the academy, after which he promises a walk for the mayor. In turn, San goes inside the house to look at his room. The guy is accompanied by one of the teachers, who says that he teaches here and helps to unlock the magical potential. He sees that San has a weak concentration, but his fighting spirit is strong enough and ready for development if the guy agrees to learn everything that the teacher knows. After that, the man offers a short tour of the territory to get to know the academy and its features better. While walking, San notices the rabbit cages and the students standing next to them. The teacher reports that this is a tradition in which new students take the lives of innocent creatures, which helps to reveal their magical abilities. In fact, he's just joking with the guy, because in fact it's not like that at all. Soon, a young and charming girl appears at the academy. A meticulous teacher stops her on the threshold and does not allow her to enter, demanding that she behave well. Xiao intervenes in the dialogue again, who compliments the girl and allows her to go beyond the usual by jumping into the building through the roof. Believing that the rabbits are being executed, San releases them from their cages and helps the unfortunate animals escape. The angry Chayahu teacher scolds the guy, but he is sure that he has done a good job and will not be intimidated by authority. As a result of the conflict, the teacher and Xiao stand up for the guy, believing that he is a kind person and has potential. A little later, San goes to his room and meets the president of the residence named Salma, who needs to be obeyed. The guy is not interested in comments until a beautiful girl named Shaw approaches him, saying that she likes San very much because he is kind and protects innocent rabbits. Being brave in her decisions, the girl declares that she will sleep in the next bed with her new friend. Salma gets angry as the Shah ignores him and insults the girl. Shaw is ready to fight the president of the residence and take his life in a fair fight to take his place and establish her own rules here. Salma does not decide to argue with the girl as he remembers her kick to the head, which made him unable to stand up. He has known her for a long time and understands perfectly well that Shaw is stronger than the rest of the students and even some of the teachers. At the same time, the girl provokes San to train to test his strength and abilities. Once the guy agrees and attacks, Wu easily defeats him. Soon an unknown woman appears in the hostel and takes the girl away, since she does not belong here. Only guys live in this room, but Shaw ignores this rule and returns to San at night to pull the bed closer to him and fall asleep in an embrace. When San wakes up, he sees a girl next to him and is very nervous, but believes that this is just a dream. In the morning, the guy wakes up and sees shocked students watching him. Shaw turned out to be in San's bed, and this is not a dream, because she was with him all night. A little later, the girl asks to braid her hair and San, in a friendly way, agrees to help her by telling his story about how he entered the academy. During dinner, the formidable teacher asks San to stay away from the girl, but he ignores his request. As soon as the teacher decides to hit the guy, Shaw stands up for him and hits the teacher. Xiao tries to threaten San and orders him not to get close to the girl because he has enough power to expel the guy from the academy. Despite the threats, San ignores the order of the prince's son and leaves with the girl. A little later, academic classes begin, where everyone reveals their fighting spirit in order to become strong and aggressive. Some of the teachers take on the appearance of a bear or a wolf, 
and the fighting spirit of the show is a wild rabbit. San tries to use the silver grass, but his fighting spirit is too weak to unleash it. The guy goes to one of the teachers to tell him about the spirit of the silver grass. After receiving useful tips and instructions, San begins to manage the grass, as a result of which it becomes very long. He still lacks strength and control, so the guy loses control of his fighting spirit. The teacher calms the novice student, as this is normal, and he just has to adapt to his strength and its capabilities. In the evening, San shows his abilities to the show, and the girl helps him develop his fighting spirit. The next morning, Sama turns to San and Shaw for help, as they try to harm him and take control of his mind. Without hesitation, San goes to the place indicated by Sama and notices armed guards guarding the entrance to the building. Using the fighting spirit of the grass, San ascends to the second floor of the building, which allows to see everything that happens inside. There is a formidable teacher and Xiao in the room, who are holding a magical beast in a cage. They try to subdue his power to themselves, after which the prince's son takes a knife and deprives the animal of life. Having committed a terrible scene, Xiao extracts the animal's fighting spirit and absorbs it into himself, becoming stronger. Shocked, San rushes to teacher Su and tells him what he saw. The teacher is not sure that this is possible, because Xiao is the son of the prince who owns the temple, and it would be strange if he does such terrible things. The next morning, San and Su go to the forest. Meanwhile, the formidable teacher and Xiao check on the students, noticing that one guy is not in the room. After interrogating Salma and the rest of the students, the prince's son does not receive an answer since the others do not know where San went. Meanwhile, the guy and the teacher are in the forest of legendary beasts. Su evokes the spirit of a fighting dog with combat skills and the ability to track odors. A wolf hiding in the bushes attacks the dog, but the magic dissipates, causing him to fall to the ground and lose his life. There are legends about this beast, as it is incredibly powerful. At some point, a spiritual ring comes out of him, but when San tries to touch it, he fails. The teacher informs that the only one who can take the spiritual ring is the one who took the life of a monster with a fighting spirit. This will allow to increase powers, but the effect is not eternal, because sooner or later this spirit will fade away. After hearing some strange sound, the teacher and the student check the cart and find the shaw hidden in one of the baskets before leaving for the forest. She says that she is very worried about the guy and decided to hide in order to at least be close to him in this way. San asks the girl not to put her life in danger because he worries about her. At the same time, the trio is surrounded by the clan of the deceased wolf to take revenge. They are preparing for an attack, so Shaw and San hide in the bushes nearby, and the teacher distracts the wild animals on themselves. Considering that they are superfluous here, the guy and the girl return to the temple when they suddenly notice the wounded legendary cat and watch him from the side. They would like to help the unfortunate animal, but they meet Xiao and the armed guards. It seems that the prince's son is hostile towards the students, but a dog appears on the field. Immediately after that, the guards are attacked by a huge legendary snake, which tries to take the lives of the guards and Xiao. A couple of students manage to escape, after which they meet Su and find out that he decided to help them in this way. He asks them not to run away from him anymore, because Sue is their only chance to survive in a magical forest full of monsters. Moments later, a huge snake attacks Sue and injures the teacher. He is weak and cannot defend himself, so San has to fight the python. Using nails and the power of thought, the guy defeats the aggressive predator and takes his spiritual ring to become even stronger. Having absorbed the force, San feels ill and falls, as he is no longer able to stand on his feet. The formidable teacher and Xiao try to take advantage of the opportunity to catch San, but Su summons the dog and uses its ability to release gas to allow the students to escape. At the same time, Xiao and his assistant arrest the good-natured teacher. San plunges into the spiritual world, where he tries to gain new strength, gained after he managed to take the life of a huge snake. Opening his eyes, the guy notices a golden ring around him, which becomes his new fighting spirit adding new abilities to him. Shaw suggests that the guy try out these powers on her, and he uses the grass, when suddenly he notices that it begins to disappear. Meanwhile, Xiao and an angry teacher interrogate Su, demanding that they stop helping students who violate the regime of their temple. Before returning to the academy, Shaw goes to the wolf clan and asks them for help. 
At the same moment, wild animals turn into spiritual rings and enter the girl's body, giving her incredible strength and power. San is the first to return to the academy and watches the place where Sue is being held. He is developing a plan to help the teacher when he suddenly notices a show behind him. The girl claims that on the way back she hunted monsters and took the life of one of them in order to take possession of his spiritual ring. Using their powers, San and Shaw make their way into the building and free the unconscious teacher. Upon waking up, Sue warns that it is a trap but it is too late. The teacher and Shaw find themselves locked in a cage from which they cannot escape due to electric shocks. Xiao soon appears on the scene and claims that his plan was almost successful as he helped to capture the three of them. San wants to free the girl and a good teacher, so he uses his superpowers, turning his hands into wood. The cage shocks the guy, but he manages to twist the metal bars so that Shaw and Sue get out. Xiao sees that the student is too weak and prepares an attack on him, but the teacher uses his fighting spirit and smoke screen to save San. Sue beats up the son of the prince of the academy, after which the trio flees and leaves the city. At the same time, Salma, who was in captivity, uses the chance to pay back and beats Xiao with all cruelty. Some time later, Xiao's brother appears at the scene of the massacre, who discovers his corpse. The aggressive teacher lost consciousness and does not remember who exactly beat the prince's son, but points to San, assuming that it was he who did it. The trio makes it to San's house to rescue his father. Once in the house, the guy notices that he is hungry and there is dust around, and his father has disappeared without a trace. He tries to use the power of the grass, but cannot as his fighting spirit is greatly weakened. Soon the father appears in the house and informs his son about what happened. Xiao lost his life and it is San who is accused of this, believing that he committed a terrible act. The father understands the consequences of all this and offers his son to surrender. Sam reflects on his father's words, and Shaw declares that he will go with him if San decides to be punished for Xiao's death. While the couple runs off in search of the mayor, the teacher carefully examines the guy's father and realizes that he has seen him before. The man summons the spirit of Tian's hammer and informs him that his son has inherited this gift. As it turned out, San's father was a great warrior, but decided to escape from his past and hide his real identity. Breaking the floor, the man points out that an ancient plant is hidden under the house, which will grow as soon as the water touches it. Sam will have to take the life of the plant in order to take away its spiritual power, and the father has no doubt that sooner or later, he will be able to do this. Realizing that the guy is of special value, Sue hurries after him to help in difficult moments. Sun and Shaw come to the mayor and tell him about what happened. They are ready to surrender and ask to be arrested after which Lizen, the brother of the late Shell, comes to the village. He arrests a guy and a girl, as well as the mayor, suspecting him of collusion with lawbreakers. The teacher should also be arrested, but he acts ahead of the curve and waters the ancient plant with water, as a result of which it begins to increase, creating a small earthquake and destroying the house in which San grew up. Lizen tries to use his power to destroy the plant, but fails. A huge tree attacks the guards and beats them up. At the same time, Sue calls San and Shaw to hide inside the house while no one is watching them. Once inside the house, the teacher shows the tree and orders San to defeat it in order to get the fighting spirit with which he will resist powerful enemies. Shaw fights with the guards, helping the tree capture anyone who is aggressive towards San. Meanwhile, the guy uses his powers to take the life of the plant and absorb its spiritual ring. It seems that the plan worked, but the spiritual ring of the tree turns out to be too strong, which is why San cannot control himself and sees hallucinations. Shaw uses his power to help San calm down and start meditating to recognize the new power living inside him. As a result, the guy manages to accept the spiritual ring of the tree, as a result of which he becomes even stronger than ever before. In the evening, People celebrate that an unknown person attacked the caravan in which the prince was and took his life. The charges against San have been dropped, but the bad teacher still thinks the guy is guilty of what happened to Xiao. In the evening, San's father communicates with So and admits that he was the man who attacked the caravan. The man is not going to reveal his identity and has done everything to protect his son from possible persecution. There comes a time when a father has to leave, leaving his son alone. San hears this and asks his father to stay, but he can't do it and just disappears. 
San rushes to Sue's teacher to explain who his father was and why he hid his identity. Sue is ready to answer the question, but now is not the right time for this. He is sure that they will meet again and his father will explain the reason for his actions, but so far the guy is not ready for this. Realizing that the path to the academy is closed to them, Sue promises to become a personal teacher for Shaw and San to teach them everything he knows. A little later, the couple goes outside to be alone. The guy is going through what happened hard because his mother has passed away a long time ago and his father has left and now he is left all alone. The girl supports the guy in a difficult moment and suggests calling her his sister so that he would not be so lonely. The next morning, the trio goes to the market when suddenly they notice the teachers from the Palace of Souls. The students have to hide and Sue finds out that they are wanted. Soon, a rich girl enters the building who generously donates money to the academy. Sun and Shaw also give money, but this time for studying at a small and less well-known academy that can reveal their abilities. Before becoming students of the academy, Shaw and San must pass a test by fighting one of the students named Cho. At night, a small academy is attacked by a lawbreaker who threatens Cho and promises to execute him. San tries to save the guy and uses a magic herb, but the opponent has two gold and two purple rings, which indicates his higher level of training. Seeing that San cannot cope alone, Rich Ning and Shaw help him. Joining forces, the trio fights the lawbreaker with dignity, but still suffers defeat. The lawbreaker takes Cho's life, after which he orders the students of the academy to escape, as this is their last chance. Shaw is injured and cannot continue fighting, so San decides to take revenge on the bad man. San uses the magic of grass and wood throws nails and summons the power of Tian's hammer to inflict maximum damage to the enemy. Despite all this, the lawbreaker comes out of the fight victorious and hits San so hard that the guy loses consciousness. Upon waking up, the guy finds out that he, Shaw, and Ning have been accepted into the academy. As it turned out, it was all a test and a test of courage, and they were the only ones who could pass it. The so-called lawbreaker is Master Zhao who is a legend and the best teacher of the academy, which is failing due to poor financial situation. The students are worried about Cho, but the master did not take his life, but only imitated the scene. Zhao also notes that San has great potential and a bright future, but he needs to train hard. The next morning it becomes known that the place where the students are staying is not an academy, but just a hotel. The real academy is hiding in a poor village, which is due to its deplorable financial situation. A strong manager calls Ning to him, as he suspects that the girl is under the influence of prohibited substances. In a personal conversation, she admits this, and also says that she is part of a strong family that has always been held in high esteem in the Palace of Souls. She wants to study here and is ready to pay generously, so that she is not asked unnecessary questions. She is ready to help financially, so Sue's manager decides to tolerate Ning and her bad temper. Meanwhile, Cho communicates with Sun and Shaw, during which it becomes known that he is the adopted son of the director of the academy. He has no magical abilities, but the guy watches with interest those who have superhuman strength. The couple worries about teacher Sue and goes in search of him, but soon meets their reliable ally. The teacher knows that there is a girl from the Spirit Palace at the academy and will stay here to ensure the safety of San and Shaw. Noticing Sue, the director flies up to him on wings to greet him. As it turned out, the director of the academy and Sue are siblings who have not seen each other for many years. In a personal conversation, Sue agrees to work for free and soon the director introduces him to the students of the academy. The next morning, students explore the surrounding area and find a burned-out house. There is nothing around him and it is not clear what caused the fire. The students assumed that a magical force was involved that they had not encountered before. The mayor of the village reports that something terrible happened and the family lost their lives. Only a boy named Chong, who received severe burns, managed to survive. Ning enters the house and sees the boy, but he runs away as soon as the black ghost appears. Sun and Shaw also go to the burned-down house and learn from a rich student about what happened. Soon, the trio notices the boy, but he runs away from them to the mayor, who helps him escape. The head of the village reports that the black ghost is the father of a guy who, for some reason, hates him. There is a misunderstanding between Ning and Cho, which causes the girl to behave aggressively, but San and Shaw do not understand her nervousness. 
A little later, Ning and Sho go to explore the area and find a strange gate. When they open them, they find themselves in a completely different place, as if it were a parallel world about which they know nothing. Shaw and San follow, and also find themselves in a new world. Noticing the unconscious man, the couple rushes to him and finds out that the black ghost attacked the guy, but he managed to escape. A group of students team up to rescue a wounded guy and drag him into their world. The student uses the force and heals the injured guy, as a result of which he looks like nothing happened to him. The students try to find a common language with Jiang, but he is very afraid and does not know what happened to his father and why he turned into an evil ghost. Soon, a group of comrades decides to fight the ghost, but the mayor takes one of them hostage, which reveals his dark essence. Ning rescues the prisoner and beats the mayor, causing the man to lose consciousness. Soon it becomes clear to the students that the black ghost is not evil and did not want to harm his son, but only tried to protect him from the bad mayor of the village. Soon, Chong merges with his father's power, which is a phoenix bird. The fighting spirit turns out to be stronger than a guy who is not ready for magical abilities. He loses control of himself and attacks everyone, after which he cannot withstand the power of the phoenix and collapses, going to a parallel world in which the students were previously. After losing consciousness, Jung sees his father saying goodbye to him before disappearing and says he will give him all his memories. When the guy returns to the real world, he tries to attack the mayor, but Teacher Su calms him down and asks him to take control of his powers before it's too late. When John reconciles, Cho douses him with water, and the mayor is successfully arrested. Soon, the head of the village admits that he is just a pawn and acted on orders from above from a certain man named Polly. As it becomes known, there is a large organization studying the transmission of martial spirits by powerful animals. The secret organization acts aggressively and brings pain and suffering to special people. Realizing that this is a threat to them, Ning suggests not waiting and finding this organization themselves. Soon, the students gather to set out on their journey. Jung again does not control his power and catches fire, but the friends manage to neutralize the guy so that he does not harm anyone. At night, friends unite and go to a neighboring city to take part in competitions and earn money for the maintenance of the academy. Bao is a unique girl with the fighting spirit of the tower able to increase the speed of the person next to her or transfer her strength to him. After taking part in the competition, Chong again does not control himself, as a result of which he injures the audience. A bar employee learns that a man with the spirit of the phoenix has shown up for the competition. The next morning, the teacher trains Chan to control his strength and abilities. He beats up the guy, but thereby teaches him how to use magic abilities correctly. The next evening, Chong controls the fire and easily defeats the opponent. The employee of Polly's bar is watching what is happening and realizes that the guy can be used for selfish purposes. The bullies cling to Shaw and San, but they deal with them. After learning that the owner of the bar is behind this, the couple goes there and beats up everyone who gets in their way. After capturing Polly, they interrogate him to find out what happened to Chan's father. The owner of the bar admits that he is a pawn and there is a person who gives him orders. Polly asks to open the drawer, but it's a trap because there's a poisonous gas inside that affects the show. Polly informs that there is no antidote, but he can meet with a superior person and get an antidote, but for this he needs to take a letter in the same mailbox and in three days go to another country. San tells the principal and teacher Sue about the incident, and a couple of days later he goes to another country. There are a lot of lawbreakers and masked psychopaths around, ready to attack San and Shaw, but they are accompanied by teacher Sue, demonstrating to others that he has seven spiritual rings. This scares everyone who lives here, because the teacher is incredibly strong and will take the life of anyone who dares to approach them. The next day, the couple goes to meet with a man giving orders to the bar owner and the mayor, but they meet a group of bandits who want to rob them. A strange man appears here, hiding under a black robe. He asks the robbers to run away, but they attack him. The man uses green gas and easily copes with opponents taking the lives of some of them. The man in black notices that Shaw is poisoned and promises to give an antidote if San works with him and completes his task. After meeting with the teacher and the principal, Sam reports that he has received a bottle of green poison and must take the life of a certain person. It's hard for the guy to make a choice, but he understands that the only way to save the show is by committing a terrible scene. 
The next day, the group goes hunting in the forest. Sho releases his fighting spirit, but it turns out that the only ability is a box of sausages to feed his friends. However, it is not just food, because it can heal from injuries and wounds, making a person healthy. Not far from the forest, a green ghost attacks a wolf man and takes his life in a matter of seconds. The group is attacked by a huge dragon, but they successfully defend themselves and defeat it. Soon after, an old and strong woman appears in front of them, who no longer has the strength. She asks to let the dragon go, but he is deprived of his life, which makes the old woman angry and beats the manager. He hits her back, causing the woman to disappear, leaving behind only a strange sound. Cho has a new ability, to create a kiwi that will allow the one who eats it to fly. Soon the group meets a strong giant who decided to attack them. The powerful beast beats up San and the others, then kidnaps Shaw and escapes. After eating the kiwi, San goes flying and lands, accidentally breaking a bottle of poison. He gets into the guy's arms, but now he is more worried about a huge spider that can take the life of anyone who gets in his way. Using the power of the hammer, San takes the spider's life and takes away its purple-colored spiritual ring. The teacher asks the guy not to absorb the ring, as it is too strong, and, by doing so, he may lose his life. San ignores Sue's words and decides to absorb the ring to confront the giant who stole the show, but the old men stop him. Ignoring all warnings, the guy absorbs the ring anyway and falls unconscious. The granddaughter of the old men takes the guide by the hand to understand that everything is fine with him. The web begins to come out of San's body and wraps him in a cocoon. Meanwhile, Shaw is hugging a hairy giant, as she realized that he is harmless and will not harm her. It turns out that they had known each other before, but had not seen each other for a long time. Shaw and the giant decide to return to their friends, and San climbs out of the cocoon, finding spider paws and black eyes. Friends try to wake the guy up, but he ignores them and leaves. San attacks the giant, but Shaw stops him. The girl tries to take away the evil energy, but the spider's paws strike her several times, as a result of which both Shaw and San lose consciousness. When he wakes up, the guy believes that this is the work of a giant, but his friends tell him the truth. Feeling guilty, San takes care of the injured girl and tries to heal her wounds. Some time later, San meets the man in black and gets the antidote for the show. He is also offered to become a member of a secret organization, but the guy refuses, deciding to stay on the side of good. The medicine does not help the girl, which makes it clear that she is poisoned by another poison and the antidote will not give the desired result. The teacher explains that San absorbed the spider's spiritual ring and took over his skills, including the poison that poisoned the show. Trying to help the girl, he uses the magic of the silver grass and improves her well-being. Meanwhile, Ning uses hypnotic abilities to bewitch one of the guys. The older brother stands up for the defenseless and enchanted guy, but the girl is strong enough to protect herself. A fight begins, witnessed by students and teachers. The director of the academy captivates the brother of the enchanted guy and does not allow him to move. The brother informs them that they have five days to teach the guy how to fight. If he wins, then everything will be fine, and if in five days he remains the same pathetic, then they will all be in trouble. A little later, the manager communicates with Ning to understand why she bewitched the guy. The girl denies this and says she is in love with him and would not do it. There are five days before the competition, so teachers should prepare the fighters as well as possible. The coach and the director conduct intensive training, trying to find an individual approach to each student. Soon, the fiery man in black arrives here to fight with his brother and bring him as much harm as possible. The brother manages to get out of a hard fight, but severe burns and painful wounds remain on his body. Some time later, a serious duel begins, in which almost all the students participate. They confront each other and a common enemy to demonstrate their strength. Friends are able to defeat a warrior with soft paws, but he turns out to be quite agile. All academies will participate in the competition, so students should be ready for a major battle. The next morning, the academy and some students are officially invited to take part in the upcoming competitions. Soon the official representatives leave, but the girl becomes ill due to poisoning. Cho treats her to his food to cure her of all diseases, but even that doesn't help. A couple of days later, the students, their teachers, and the principal embark on a dangerous journey to take part in competitions. On the way, they notice several people chained to rocks and decide to help those who are still alive. 
A few days later, the group reaches the tournament venue and stops at a hotel. Here they are greeted by a loyal soldier of the emir of this country and informs them of the rules of staying on foreign territory. In the evening, San and Shaw go for a walk, when suddenly they find a crying woman who has gone mad because her husband was deprived of his life. They were a happy couple, but they got involved with a bad company of strong and evil warriors, for which the husband paid with his life. Dangerous lawbreakers are ready to fight with any soldiers, as they do not know pity and weakness. Here, the couple meets an old friend, the same guy who took Xiao's life. He apologizes for the inconvenience and treats Shaw and San with sweets, but they refuse to take them, because this will not pay the debt for flight and persecution. A little later, the guys communicate, and the fugitive admits that after escaping from the academy, he ended up here. He was taught by lawbreakers, so he became the strongest warrior in the city and joined the elite squad of evil warriors. At the same time, Wang would like to join San and his team, but the guy clearly does not like this idea because he believes that he is facing a lawbreaker. The next morning, the students of the poor academy go to the battlefield, where they are met by a gang of evil warriors. A fight begins, during which everyone uses all their strength. Evil warriors have more abilities and spirit rings, so they defeat San's team. His friends have almost no chance and they are all defeated. San asks to use a trick and strike with nails from the devices on their hands. Friends use protection and wound the evil warriors, which allows them to weaken them a little. Using magic bombs, the friends defeat the evil warriors and the locals are happy and welcome the winners. A little later, the man in black takes the lawbreakers into the desert and chains them to stones so that they lose their lives. Friends go to the royal palace to take part in competitions. Before the start of the competition, the students of the Beggar Academy rest and eat, waiting for the upcoming battles. The students greet the elder and register for the competition, after which it turns out that there is a prince here who is a bad person. San's team participates, but they are joined by Shio, the king's son. Green smoke also penetrates here, behind which another member of the royal family is hiding. He captures one of the guys and lifts him into the air, demanding to tell his name. The manager protects the student, but the old man from the royal family immobilizes the entire group using the power of green gas. It turns out that he has nine spiritual rings and is practically invincible, while the man wants to punish San, believing that he was the one who took Xiao's life. The prince stops the ongoing mayhem and asks for forgiveness for the behavior of a strong magician. The team is sent to the competition site, but they find themselves in some abandoned area where the doors fall instead of opening. The manager greets the queen, who was hiding in one of the buildings, as they have known each other for a long time. As it turned out, she loved the director and once helped him create an academy, but there was no reciprocity, so she ran away. Now fate has brought them together again, but the director is embarrassed by his feelings and does not want the students to bother him with stupid questions. Some time later, Ellie, Shaw, and Sun go for a walk through the city market, where they notice a cage with rabbits. Suddenly, San disappears and the girls can't figure out where he's gone. When they return home, they inform the principal and teacher Sue about this. They suspect that the guy was kidnapped, but they don't understand who could be behind it. As it turned out, it was done by an old man whose granddaughter is unconscious because of the poison. The old man tries to get the antidote, but San does not know how to help because his action in the form of a spider was a spontaneous mistake, which angers grandfather. He would like to take the guy's life, but San is not susceptible to poisons. The old man feeds the guy with various poisons, which confirms his words. At the same time, Shaw attacks the royal palace, suggesting that San is being held somewhere inside. She violates the royal laws, so Yo-Yo beats the girl, as a result of which she is defeated. As punishment, the prince orders her to be hanged at the palace gate, but the director arrives and frees the girl. Realizing that the poisons do not work, the old man and San go in search of an antidote and meet the man in black. Soon, the guy has to come face to face with a king named Shinyan. The king uses hypnosis and makes the guy his spy to get valuable information. The old man and San return to the members of the academy. Upon seeing the guards, the old man uses green poison, causing the guards to lose consciousness. Bursting inside, San engages in a fight with Yo-Yo and sends him flying, forcing the guards to flee. After meeting with Shaw, San, and the old man return to the elderly magician's granddaughter to heal the girl. 
the guy uses plant magic and shares her thing with the girl to make her immune to toxins. He gradually cleanses the girl's liquid from the poison, but this process is too complicated and he needs to replenish energy. At some point, Sam begins to lose his spiritual rings and Shaw does everything to support him, as a result of which he also loses his spiritual rings and then consciousness. A little later, Shaw regains consciousness and San asks her not to risk her life for him. The next morning, the old man takes the couple to the portal, where they can go to another world. Here the guy hears the voice of his mother, telling him the truth about his life and childhood. The guy is going through all this hard, but decides to focus on the task and find a plant that will save the old man's granddaughter and improve the well-being of the show. The mother reports that she sacrificed herself because she knew the secret of immortality and paid dearly for it. Now she gives her son two gifts, one of which is the power of a friendly spirit, and the second is the ability to recover from any injury, but he will be able to use this gift only once. The show heals and supports the guy in a difficult moment. Taking the magic plants, the couple returns to the real world and meets an old man. Back at the academy, San shares the plants with his friends and informs them that he knows the truth about his mother and wants revenge. In addition, he wants to reveal the identity of his father, since now he has the right to get more useful information about him. The teacher reports that San's father served in the royal palace but appropriated other people's secrets. He was accused of treason, but his wife tried to protect her husband, as a result of which she lost her life. Before the start of the competition, San goes into the forest and takes the life of another spider to get a spiritual ring and restore his strength. Soon, students gather in a large arena for duels, where duels are held. In the first battles, Sho and the other academy students defeat the guards, despite the fact that they are stronger and more experienced. Ning is defeated and does not want to admit it, not considering himself weaker than the others. San also goes out to fight against a guard with the strength of a chimpanzee. The guy has four spiritual rings, so he easily proves his superiority and wins a landslide victory. Then a team battle against dishonesty is held, but even here the students win. The team easily wins a series of victories and gets to the finals, but they may not be missed for the last fight, since San has to complete one task and he has a short trip ahead of him. Soon the guy finds himself in the royal palace of spirits where he meets the queen, who is able to unleash the power of Tian's hammer. San realizes that these people have deprived him of his mother and wants to take revenge, but the queen declares that she is not to blame for what happened and expels the guy from the palace. The next day is the semifinals of the competition, during which they will have to fight the strongest opponent. Sun and Shaw go to a doubles match, where they get a difficult victory. The team is proud of them as they glorify their academy. The next morning, the director gathers everyone together to make a solemn speech and prepare the wards for the finals. He is sure that they have become a family and only by joining forces, they will be able to achieve maximum results. In the finals, the academy team meets with strong opponents who have five spiritual rings, including purple and gold. All fighters use all their strengths, talents, and capabilities to defeat the enemy. A legendary duel does not happen without losses, so San's team loses one person. It seems that their chances have converged to zero, but the situation changes when Salma changes sides and joins San's team, allowing them to win the competition. The team rejoices and holds each other's hands, becoming the strongest academy on the continent. At the same moment, the unexpected happens as the queen blocks the students' movements and informs them that they have violated the rules. The competition is only for people with fighting spirit, and the show is a legendary monster that is 100,000 years old. The girl's true form is a wild rabbit, but at her age, monsters can take on human form. The queen wants to take Shaw's life, but San asks not to do it or punish him instead. Not succumbing to provocation, the queen decides to strangle the guy when San's father suddenly appears and uses a hammer to save his son and avenge his late wife on his own. The queen and San's father come together in an epic battle, from which the man emerges victorious and allows the students to leave the temple. A little later, the father reports that his wife and mother, San, was also a monster who took human form, but he still loved her. The father leaves, realizing that the guy is safe, and San and Shaw stay together forever because they were made for each other.